of what he's doing right now. But but a few years ago, Andy was the crew chief for for a friend of ours named Brad Smith. When Brad was running, uh, and and still runs, but was running full time in the ARCA Racing Series, and I got a chance to work for Andy up at uh, MIS. One of Andy Quillen's one, low, I, I was low one, I points was, of his career, having <laughs> would, you work with I him. would think so. I was Andy's fueler for that race. <laughs> and, we, and I have proof of that, Beth. Go to the tape, as they say. Probably only changed two tires. Oh, the time. good boy. Alright, we have more cars out. Alright. Yeah. Just talk, just talk. Yeah, get us up. Oh, I'll stay in the middle. Oh, I'll call Well, you'll have a radio. Right? Just matter, just push the car in and kind of help them stop all that stuff. No, you did all right. Right, thanks. It's better looking than you. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I agree 100%. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that was it. That was it. Now, you, heard, right. you heard that right. He said, I, I did all right. <laughs> That's right. You did all right. Well, welcome to the show, Andy Quillen. How you doing, buddy? I haven't heard from you for a while. I'm doing real good. How about yourself? Hey, we're doing terrific. we got to let everybody know, Andy Quillen is the driver of the number 88 hauler. Now, if you don't know who drives number 88, you don't know anything about NASCAR, obviously. Right, yeah, exactly. But uh, <laughs> like I said, Andy, the, the low life of your career as a crew chief for Brad Smith had to have been <laughs> Charlie Turner as the fueler. Oh yeah, that that was a good race too. I mean, we had a good time that weekend. I remember it. Yeah, yeah, that it was, was a good time. So, and, and I it was it was one of the experiences of my life, and I appreciate you guys letting me do that. So, uh, but oh, I would think no you, I would think you're having one of the experiences of your life right now this season, driving that uh, that rig for the eighty eight team. Oh yeah, I mean it's we we've been real close on some good finishes and stuff, but just. Seems like some bite us. Something's been biting us right at the end, but we're in the chase. We're good. We've got, any, got ten more races left, and I think we'll we'll be in good shape. So. Well, Andy, of course, this is the first year you've been with that race team. But if you can give us some idea of what it feels like to be in the chase, obviously you don't have a, a, a reference point of not making the chase. But but tell me what what the race team feels, how everybody's feeling about making it into the chase. Yeah, is it like a relief, or is it, uh, or is it, uh, you know, just the beginning? Yeah, you know, slam dunk. Everybody's everybody's pretty pumped up, just as in like we made it. You know, I know we didn't have any wins this year, and I only started back in June, but we didn't we didn't have any wins, but we've been. We've been consistent on finishes. We've been right there towards the finish, you know, top tens. We did have a – we finished fifth that Pocono, the second Pocono race. But we've just been, like, right there. Like, real cars have been real good, and everybody's pumped, excited. We're ready to move on. So now it's time to get down to it and just really fine-tune it, even the small stuff now for the next ten races. And I think I think we'll be good. We just need to stay, stay consistent. Yes, a few couple wins would be good, but we just really the big big thing with us is just staying consistently. Andy, ever since and we're talking to Andy Quillen, who drives the the hauler for the number eighty eight uh, Dale Earnhardt Junior. team. Uh, and Andy, we've Steve and I've been talking about having you on the show ever since we found out you got this gig. But uh, this is the first chance we had an, an opportunity, and and I don't think people. I'm sure, I'm absolutely one hundred percent sure that people don't think about the responsibilities of the guy who's driving that hauler, but. <laughs> You, there's pressure on you. I mean, you got to make sure that thing gets there in, in time and in oh, yeah. one in one piece. I mean, there's, uh, what's that like? What's that heat like? I mean, it's it's just a big responsibility. I mean, just making sure you, you know, we got a couple guys in the shop that are make sure the truck is turned around properly, and everybody on the team wise, all the mechanics, they have everything they need to put on the trailer, and then I just double check with them, make sure. All their stuff's good, and then I don't check my stuff, as in, you know, what's just simple as groceries, supplies, make sure the trailer and tractor are up to date, you know, nothing wrong with it, and we can get it safely down the road and stuff. And then just performing at the track, as in, keep on top of all the stuff I need to do and helping out the guys so they don't fail 
and the whole thing don't fail either. But I mean, it's it's a big responsibility, but it's it's a good responsibility too at the same time. Well, watching you having the, had having had the opportunity to watch you up, I mean, r- literally up really close uh, during a race weekend when you were running Brad Smith's crew at the race. I mean, the responsibilities are similar. I mean, you have the yeah. same same things, right? I mean, it's it, there's a lot alike about what you're doing now sure. and what you did as a crew chief. Yeah, I mean, just like with Brad's, it was like a, it was more of a smaller deal. Right. But you know, I still had to look over stuff that like maybe Brad oversaw or didn't really pay attention to close, and like myself and then Tony and Shane that also worked on that team. You know, we kind of paid attention to that small stuff. So. Yeah, I kind of oversaw it, but we still worked together as a team on everything. And it's the same way as a hauler. I mean, you're I'm overseeing that whole trailer as is making sure I know where everything is at and the exact location it's at. So when the guys say, hey, I need this part, I know exactly where to go and exactly what they need. So, I mean, it's, it's, a big, it's a big responsibility, but it's over time, like doing the hauler stuff for a couple of years now that I've done, just kind of learn your own routine on stuff and where do you want to put stuff and just kind of make try to make it simple and easy for yourself and the rest of the team. So if, like, say you're not there, they kind of know where to go and just try to make it simple for themselves and for yourself too. We're talking with Andy Quillen. And, uh, Andy, I guess that, that kind of leads to the to the next question. You said you got this gig in, in the middle of the season. How did somebody just – all of a sudden get the job as the driver for the 88 uh, did it how did it come about um i just the whole thing since i started with brad and going further with my career in the truck series and into the cup series was just getting to know people just talk with them and then being at the track every weekend and showing that my hard work and everything like can pay off and i got to talk with some guys that champion wheel and tire that it's another company that hauls called the wheels and mm, right. equipment for the nascar teams and they come about hey there's an opening over at net or at hendrix i'm like really you know i just and i just jumped on it like something like that you just don't hesitate you like you just go for it like mm-hmm. i just think i gotta go and sent a resume and did an interview and didn't hear anything for a while wasn't sure and then i got an email and off and stuff and then i just jumped right out and I worked at David Streming's previous before the Hendrix deal, and David himself and crew chief, they were they were all cool as, and they understood my situation, and I didn't want to burn any bridges between between them and me. So, you know, I finished out two weeks. You know, I wanted to do it right and everything. So they were, and they're pretty, and they're happy for me that I moved on and see to see me move up in that big of step. You know, from from David Streming's you know cup team to a big even bigger NASCAR team, but they're really happy for me. But it's the main thing is just getting to know people. Like just it's just weird. It's just kinda of how the industry works. It's kinda of funny, but I'm really I'm really happy that where I'm in position and everything. Okay, the, the, your your team's going to be in Chicago this weekend uh, for the first race of the chase. What 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 are your responsibilities on Sunday when you, when on race day once uh, you know when everything's done, qualifying's all done, uh, the, the drivers are out on uh, you know getting introed. What's Andy Quillen do from then until the end of the race? Okay, um, for Sunday usually Sunday's like my easy day almost. Um, it's just kind of packing the cooler, doing a little clean on the trailer, and then once the guys roll the car out to go to tech. I start cleaning up the toolbox, just getting it cleaned up, organized, you know, pack up some stuff so kind of make it look neat. And then once everybody leaves the trailer and goes out to pit row for the race, then I start I'm start working. You know, rolling off the rugs, prepping the trailer to get loaded, loading some things, getting the lounge prep, just getting everything ready to load so everything kind of just clicks. Everything gets loaded real quick and the guys can go. Uh, once in a while in the race, I'll walk up to pit road, just kind of take the cooler, repack it. You know, everything's good there, and that's really about it. And then we've had a couple of incidents, you know, stuff we've worked on the car, so I kind of, I'll help out a little bit, but I don't want to get anybody's way because they know what they need to do. I'll just assist them as much as they can. But other than that, once we get loaded and if we're clear to back out, we're, we back out and we head out and we 
try to get back to the shop as soon as possible. Okay, I got one more question for you about race day. When when Junior wins that race on Sunday, are you going to be in victory lane, or you got to stay back at the hauler and just wait for those guys to get done playing? Um, I'll, I'll be on. I'll be at the road. I'll be in victory lane. All right. Like I'll be right there with them. Oh yeah. All right. Good <laughs> I'm, deal. I'm, I'm ready. I'm re- I'm ready for that first win for for myself and for the team this year. All right. Well, Andy, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, it was great to talk to you again. Yeah, we'll, we'll see you Sunday. We're going to look you up. Beth Ann and I are going to be in Chicago, so we're going to look you up and okay. uh, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more yeah, then. Yeah. yeah, just stop by the hall. No problem. I'll be there. All right, buddy. All right. Thanks so much, Andy. Andy Best of luck to you, have man. Have a safe trip. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank yep. you. All right. Take care. Andy Quillen, he's really just a great guy. I mean, I <laughs> – yeah, you have no idea how embarrassed I was that weekend <laughs> uh, when I was the quote unquote fueler for that team, and it, Smith just pushed me into that whole thing. It was like I had no choice once well, I got there. 